from which over a dozen states have suspended funding. Funding that for years Hamas has cruelly exploited to advance its war machine and which UNRWA has covered up. The revelation that 13 UN employees participated in the October 7 massacre was the straw that broke the camel's back for UNRWA's major funders, but it is only the tip of the iceberg of the agency's collusion with Hamas. In today's briefing, I want to lay out the evidence of how UNRWA has been aiding and abetting Hamas, its staff on the ground, and the global leadership knowingly covering up for Hamas. We'll declassify some of the intelligence that has already been reported in the media and unpack the much broader pattern of collusion between UNRWA and the Hamas Army of Terror. UNRWA is a front for Hamas. It has been fundamentally compromised in three main ways. Hiring terrorists on a massive scale, letting its infrastructure be used for Hamas military activity and relying on Hamas for aid distribution in the Gaza Strip. It has been compromised in a way that makes it not only a tool of Palestinian terrorism against Israel, but also an ineffective mechanism of distributing aid to civilians in Gaza. In light of this systemic rot, UNRWA simply cannot be relied upon to investigate or reform itself. It is not a neutral organization. It has been hijacked by Hamas, and it is the mechanism that Hamas uses to launder its propaganda and talking points for the world. The image behind me was released by Hamas police in Rafah. It shows Hamas guards aboard a UN aid truck carrying aid clearly labeled from the UK entering an UNRWA compound. Two of the men are masked, and perhaps three are in plain clothes. It raises profound questions about the relationship between UNRWA and Hamas. Is Hamas hijacking aid, or is it simply providing services for the United Nations? If they're providing services, then UNRWA must answer questions about the nature of that engagement. Is this a handshake deal or a contract? And what is Hamas getting in return? What safeguards does UNRWA have to ensure that aid donated by the international community is not being hijacked by a terrorist army that prioritizes its military machine? These are legitimate questions that the world must demand that UNRWA answer, and that it must answer transparently. Philippe Lazzarini, the head of UNRWA, has simply ignored an invitation to testify before the US House Foreign Affairs Committee while demanding a continued flow of cash from international taxpayers without any scrutiny or oversight. The following is a summary of the intelligence presented to our allies about UNRWA's involvement with Hamas, with further elaboration on all the open source intelligence that has been available from previous months. Let's start with the tip of the iceberg. UN staff were among the perpetrators of the October 7 massacre. UN staff, their salaries paid for with international taxpayer money, were involved in the barbaric, premeditated atrocities and abductions. At least 13 UNRWA employees are implicated in the massacre. Ten Hamas operatives, two Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and one unaffiliated. Of those, six UNRWA employees infiltrated Israel in the attack, five were Hamas, one unaffiliated. Four UNRWA employees were involved in abducting Israelis, including two of those who infiltrated Israeli territory. Another three UNRWA employees, all Hamas, were summoned via text message to arrive at an assembly point on the night of October 6th and directed to equip themselves with weapons. At least one UNRWA employee supplied the Hamas invasion with logistical support. Another was directed to establish an operations room on October 8th. UNRWA has responded by threatening criminal prosecution against the suspects. Now that response raises more questions than answers. In what jurisdiction, for example, does UNRWA intend to prosecute these Hamas and Islamic Jihad members? Gaza? Does it plan to hand them over to the local authorities, Hamas? Or will it extradite them to Israel? We view this as nothing more than a transparent stunt to try to continue avoiding responsibility. Not only does the evidence show that UNRWA staff were involved in the massacre, they're also directly implicated in holding hostages once they were in Gaza. At least two Israeli survivors of Hamas captivity have testified that they were held in the homes of UNRWA teachers. One of them, as Channel 13 reported, was moved between hideouts through UNRWA facilities. When that report first surfaced, UNRWA accused the journalist of spreading misinformation and vowed to investigate the incident. That was on December 1st, nearly two months ago. Needless to say, 
UNRWA has not followed up on that promise. But it's more than just a dozen bad apples. Add two zeros and make it 1,200. UNRWA is riddled with Hamas members. Our intelligence indicates that out of approximately 12,000 UNRWA employees in the Gaza Strip, about 10% are Hamas or Islamic Jihad operatives. And another 50% are first-degree relatives of a Hamas operative. Now, it's long been known that UNRWA is riddled with Hamas. This is an open secret. In 2004, this is 20 years ago, then-chief of UNRWA Peter Hansen told CBC News TV, and I quote, Oh, I am sure there are Hamas members on the UNRWA payroll, and I don't see that as a crime. The fact that many UNRWA staff are also Hamas operatives is widely known in Gaza. On December 27th, the IDF declassified a recorded phone call between an IDF officer and a resident of Gaza who complained about Hamas controlling aid distribution through UNRWA. The situation is terrible, the man told the IDF officer, because the humanitarian people the people responsible for humanitarian aid are thieves. Hamas, he continued, has its hands on UNRWA administration workers, and it manages UNRWA. They are those in charge of the agency and those in charge of everywhere else. Those in charge of the departments or the regional headquarters of the agency, that is UNRWA, are Hamas operatives themselves. And not only is UNRWA riddled with Hamas, it's riddled with support for Hamas. The independent watchdog UN Watch uncovered an UNRWA telegram group of 3,000 UNRWA teachers, one quarter of UNRWA's total staff in Gaza. And in that, they glorified and celebrated the atrocities of October 7th, praying for the terrorist success and Israel's destruction without a single objection from anyone on the UN payroll. But Hamas is even more deeply embedded in UNRWA. Its infrastructure is literally embedded in UNRWA sites. The IDF has uncovered multiple instances of Hamas military infrastructure located inside UNRWA facilities, including schools and hospitals. Our troops have unearthed extensive Hamas infrastructure built into UNRWA schools from tunnels to terrorist hideouts. Hamas uses these facilities under the UN logo to store arms, base rocket launchers, run headquarters and locate tunnel shafts for the swift movement of forces throughout the Gaza Strip who can then hide beneath the shield of the United Nations. Hamas routinely uses UNRWA schools as hideouts as part of its human shield strategy, blending into the civilian population in a way that it hopes will give it immunity. In many cases, Hamas and PIJ fire rockets and mortar shells from nearby and even within UNRWA schools. Throughout the war, the IDF has updated about incidents where its forces have come under fire from inside UNRWA schools, as well as weapons stuffed in UNRWA bags. In recent days, we have uncovered far more than UNRWA has ever admitted, meaning it was either negligently blind or willingly complicit with Hamas's human shield strategy. And just as we have been systematically exposing the Hamas human shield strategy in Gaza throughout the war, we expect more evidence to be forthcoming in the coming days. Watch this space. Now, Hamas operates out of UNRWA facilities, and it also steals its aid. We know that Hamas uses UNRWA resources for its needs, especially food, humanitarian aid and fuel. There have been several significant incidents of fuel being stolen, including from hospitals, at an estimated value of more than $1 million, according to the intelligence we shared with UNRWA donors, as well as jeeps and other equipment. Now, this is not only a question of Hamas raiding UNRWA facilities, but of active Hamas influence over UNRWA to the point of coordination. Hamas defined the requirement for an UNRWA representative on its government's wartime committees as part of its wartime plans. Hamas also exercises significant control over UNRWA's domestic and international appointments. Only in 2021, Hamas forced UNRWA to fire its Gaza chief, Matthias Schmaler, for saying that the IDF airstrikes are precise and hugely sophisticated. Now, UNRWA knows and it is knowingly covering up for Hamas. Because UNRWA is a Hamas front. It literally covers up for Hamas. Go to UNRWA's Twitter page and search for tweets about Hamas.
You will find exactly one tweet in all of its Twitter history, and it's from the start of the war. And it's complaining about Gazans being equated with Hamas. That's it. Not a single word about the terrorist regime governing Gaza, which is always referred to when it must, as the de facto local authorities. And UNRWA covers up for Hamas's crimes. At the start of the war, after the October 7 massacre in which its own staff were involved, it admitted that Hamas stole fuel and medical equipment from its stockpiles. It then deleted those tweets and tried to deny its own admission. On October 16th, UNRWA tweeted, and I quote, UNRWA received reports that yesterday a group of people with trucks purporting to be from the Ministry of Health of the de facto authorities in Gaza, that's Hamas, removed fuel and medical equipment from the agency's compound in Gaza City. The thread continues. Our staff were compelled to evacuate UNRWA headquarters in Gaza City on a few hours' notice during the night of Friday 13th October. Since then, UNRWA has had no access to the compound and no additional details about the removal of assets." End quote. And there you have it, UNRWA admitting that Hamas stole fuel, 24,000 litres of fuel to be precise, according to the IDF. But UNRWA then deleted that tweet and it put out an urgent clarification that reads like someone put a, head, put a gun to the head of its social media intern. And I quote, with regards to reports on social media of looting of an UNRWA warehouse, UNRWA would like to confirm that no looting has taken place in any of its warehouses in the Gaza Strip. End quote. Now, those reports on social media were UNRWA's own admission. UNRWA admitted that Hamas stole fuel and then covered it up. Now, Hamas uses UNRWA to launder its propaganda for global consumption. And the world goes along with it because the UN logo gives Hamas and gives Hamas, this Hamas front a veneer of legitimacy. By the way, I myself found myself giving interviews at the start of the war, in which interviewers told me that UNRWA had reassured them that fuel would not reach Hamas, despite its own admission that it had, an admission that it covered up. Here's another example. Hamas uses UNRWA facilities for military purposes, storing rockets and locating its tunnel shafts there. And once again, UNRWA covers it up. During the 2014 conflict, UNRWA found Hamas rockets in its schools on at least three occasions, and at least on one occasion, it gave them back to Hamas. The UN is now pretending that it didn't know about the tunnels under its schools, despite previously admitting that it did. Two weeks ago, UN spokesman Stefan Dujaric was asked whether there had ever been any indication to the UN that Hamas was digging tunnels under Gaza. He said the answer was clearly no. But former UNRWA Gaza director, Matthias Schmaler, after Hamas forced him out, admitted to the presence of tunnels in an UNRWA school. Many people told me throughout my four years, he said, there are tunnels everywhere and it is a safe assumption. Something he said after he was out of the job already. UNRWA covers up for Hamas and it refuses to take any responsibility. Mr. Lazzarini has been repeatedly presented with detailed evidence about UNRWA's terrorist connections and has done absolutely nothing. Even worse, the entire UN apparatus has repeatedly shrugged off concerns, ignored evidence of support for Hamas terrorism in its ranks and disparaged and defamed the independent watchdogs that have been raising the alarm, accusing them of intense politically motivated attacks and smear campaigns. Mr. Lazzarini has been providing cover for terrorists, and now he is demanding more cash from international taxpayers while deflecting demands for international oversight. But the problem is wider still. UNRWA is a core plank in Hamas's strategy because its activity allows Hamas to maintain public order since its 2007 coup, while focusing its resources on its military apparatus and terror attacks. I refer you only to a Russia Today interview with Hamas Politburo member Musa Abu Marzouk on October 27th. Asked why Hamas has built 500 kilometers of tunnels for its fighters instead of bomb shelters for civilians, he answered thus, These tunnels are meant to protect us from the airplanes. We are fighting from inside the tunnels. Everyone knows that 75% of people in the Gaza Strip are refugees, and it's the responsibility of the United Nations to protect them, end quote.
And all this is quite apart from the diet of jihad and martyrdom taught at UNRWA schools, which have been investigated and explored at length. Those schools, historically breeding grounds of Palestinian terrorism, and that's enough for a briefing on its own. I'll refer you only to a three-day pupil strike that UNRWA teachers organized last year after the agency was forced under public pressure to suspend a teacher who promoted the murder of Jews. Both UN Watch and Impact SE have investigated incitement in UNRWA schools at length, and this poses a core challenge for the urgent mission of de-radicalization that must follow the day after Hamas and the day after Israel's victory in this war that Hamas started. In funding UNRWA, therefore, foreign states have been playing into Hamas's governing strategy by letting it off the hook for taking care of civilians. The construction of a vast underground tunnel network, one and a half times longer than the London Underground, however, shows that Hamas was perfectly capable of large-scale infrastructure works and that its problem was never resources but priorities. And it prioritized the October 7 massacre thanks to UNRWA and the international community taking civilians off its hands. We regard UNRWA's relationship with Hamas as a matter of grave concern for the international rules-based order, given the ICJ's reliance on its statements to entertain South, Aria's, South Africa's spurious lawsuit last week. Pretoria exploited the Genocide Convention to shield the perpetrators of an actual act of genocide, and the ICJ accepted at face value talking points that UNRWA, complicit with Hamas, laundered for Hamas. And we're sure that this relationship will also alarm foreign governments because it means that their citizens' hard-earned tax dollars have gone to fuel Hamas's war machine instead of helping the civilians who need that aid. Israel wants to see humanitarian aid reach the civilians in Gaza who need it, while making sure that Hamas cannot steal it. And so a damning indictment of UNRWA as far as its donors are concerned is simply thus. UNRWA is just a terrible aid distribution mechanism. And that's because it's not an aid distribution agency. Support for UNRWA as a mechanism of aid delivery is failing the people of Gaza, who are suffering from Hamas hijacking aid, and nobody speaking out against it except for us. UNRWA's leadership is deflecting blame onto Israel because historically the easiest way to avoid responsibility is simply to scapegoat Israel. Despite excess capacity at the Israeli crossings and despite extraordinary measures to get aid into a territory used as a base for an armed invasion on October 7th, when we know Hamas is hijacking some of that aid, UNRWA's officials continue to lie through their teeth and say that UNRWA is not allowing aid in. And the world continues to buy it because Hamas uses UNRWA's status as a UN agency to launder its talking points and propaganda. But the problem of UNRWA goes far deeper than its mere complicity with Hamas. UNRWA, unfortunately, is an organization that has been hijacked by the Palestinians to perpetuate this conflict rather than solve it. For 75 years, Unlike the UN's noble treatment of refugees from every other conflict on planet Earth, Palestinians have been told across UN facilities that they are still refugees from a war that took place decades ago, that they possess a right that does not exist in international law to settle in another sovereign country of which they were never citizens, and that one day Israel will cease to exist and they will return. It's no coincidence that decade after decade, UNRWA has given rise to terrorists who butchered Jews, such as the Black September terrorists who perpetrated the massacre of Israeli athletes at the 1972 Munich Olympics. One simply cannot understand the October 7 massacre without realizing that the vast majority of people living in Gaza, born in Gaza, are indulged by UNRWA to believe that Gaza is not their home and they have a right, armed if necessary, to settle in another sovereign state. UNRWA's problem is not bad apples. It's systemic rot based on rotten roots. The fact that it is predicated on a rejection of Israel's existence, subsidized by international taxpayers. In light of the abundant evidence of UNRWA's complicity with Hamas and its failures to distribute aid to civilians who need it, Israel calls for the following. One, the defunding of UNRWA. 
the minority of states still funding UNRWA, despite revelations of its staff's involvement in the 10-7 massacre, must suspend funds immediately. They must ensure that humanitarian aid reaches the people of Gaza and not through this Hamas front, which is siphoning it for himself. Foreign Minister Israel Katz has called for UNRWA to be replaced with agencies dedicated to genuine peace and development. It happens the rest of the world in every other conflict in the world where people are helped by genuine UN aid agencies and not by tailor-made refugee agencies. Two, the resignation or dismissal of UNRWA's leadership and a thorough investigation of what they knew about its ties with Hamas. There must be accountability for this cover-up and UNRWA's leadership must be held accountable. And three, consistent with his 3D vision for peace, requiring the destruction of Hamas and demilitarization of Gaza, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has spoken forcefully of the need for de-radicalization in Gaza. He's therefore stated clearly the need to ensure that Gaza's children not be educated to be terrorists, as UNRWA has consistently practiced and, had, and as has been openly documented. UNRWA is part of the problem, not part of the solution. It is a Hamas front, and it's time to put it behind. That's the end of today's briefing, and we'll now take your questions.